Can anyone guess what type of car this is? It's a Columbus Electric Model 1010 that was made by the Columbus Buggy Works Company here in Columbus, Ohio, that started manufacturing electric vehicles over a century ago in 1903. At the time, the vehicle was heralded as odorless, quiet, fun to drive, had 125 miles of range, and it saw mass production all the way to the beginning of World War I. We are rediscovering a love for electric vehicles today, such as through the Smart Columbus program, a city and region-wide effort to shift our mobility patterns, which carries aggressive electric vehicle adoption goals. And as we're doing this, we're finding a similar fascination with electric vehicles as we found years ago. Better performance, uh, increased fuel economy, and also reduced emissions, and also no need for oil changes. This photo is actually of myself and my TED Talk coach visiting a charging station just down the road from here. And while all this is really exciting, it really does represent a tremendous revolution going on. The electric vehicle revolution is here. A recent study by AAA found that one in five respondents desired to purchase an all-electric or plug-in hybrid vehicle as their next option. That's up from one in seven only a year ago. And while this is very exciting, there's a deeper potential for electric vehicles that can sometimes get swept up in the hype. In the energy industry, there's a term called grid decarbonization. It's the simple thought that in order to shift away from fossil fuels and mitigate climate change, we need to find cleaner carbon-free sources of energy, such as wind and solar. Here's a recent finding of our emissions from the US EPA, as broken out by its respective sectors. A lot of this pie chart is what you would expect to find with electricity generation, a large source of emissions that you see out of this pie. And while grid decarbonization is important, it only gets us so far in terms of deeper decarbonization goals. Only things connected back to the grid can reap the benefit. And electricity generation only represents 29% of the overall pie. So there's still plenty more on the table in terms of other sources of emissions that we can help reduce. So let's take a look at those other sources, except now break it out over time. As you can see, a lot of these sources have been decreasing. We're actually reaching our lowest levels of emissions in over 20 years. That's really encouraging, and it represents tremendous hard work that has taken place across all these sectors to rein in emissions. The one key sector that has not seen a decrease over this time, however, is transportation which actually increased by 20% over that same period of time. So what if there's a way to connect transportation and other large emission sectors together in our fight to mitigate climate change? This is the premise of a new line of thinking that's emerging in energy and environmental circles, simply described as electrify everything. It <laughs> even has a hashtag. Electrify Everything moves the notion of decarbonization forward into your home and into your everyday life by looking at the appliances and machines that you depend on. So rather than heating your home on a cold day with fossil fuels, you could use an electrical heat pump. <coughs> or when you're visiting your favorite restaurant, they could cook your meal using an electricity stove or induction cooking rather than a gas-fired stove. But the largest fossil fuel and energy user in your life is probably the one right outside of your door, your car. But now, more than ever, is there a viable way for that to go electric as well? In the market, there's nearly 50 all-electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles, with many manufacturers pledging to bring even more makes and models over the coming years. But for some, there's still that lingering question what exact impact do all these electric vehicles have on emissions as we look to deploy these around the world? Well, first, the good news. Even in fossil fuel heavy regions, such as the Midwest, where we use a lot of coal and natural gas to still generate our electricity, electric vehicles can still have a 40 to 50% emission reduction versus their gasoline counterparts. That's to say electric vehicles do have an emission profile when you put them into service which we call life cycle emissions. This accounts for uh, emissions that are generated as you're making the energy, transporting it, everything it takes to get to the vehicle. And while gasoline vehicles too have life cycle emissions, 
they remain pretty constant throughout the vehicle's life because it's locked into one type of fuel that it can use throughout the duration. Electric vehicles, however, can see their life cycle emissions decrease over time so long as the grid is continuing to clean up. David Roberts best sums this up as writer for Vox, that greener electricity raises all electrical boats. The Union of Concerned Scientists helps sum this up in a map they released, where they take the country and break it down by its electrical grid regions. And what they did was they took the emissions of electric vehicles and translated it to miles per gallon, or MPG. So that's to say a vehicle driving in Ohio gets roughly the equivalent of 42 miles to the gallon for the emissions it produces. This map was made in 2009, however, and was later updated with more recent findings in 2015 that saw emission factors for electric vehicles drop across the board throughout the country. This is thanks in part to continued shifts away from coal to cleaner forms of energy and renewables, especially in the Midwest. Think about it. Did your gasoline car improve its MPG over that same period of time? Globally, we're looking at nearly 55% of new vehicles purchased in 2040 to be all electric. That's a lot of vehicles that would be coming online. The National Renewable Energy Laboratory released a recent study that found while this will increase overall electricity demand, it actually reduces energy consumption as a whole, thanks in part to how efficiently electric vehicles use energy. And this new electricity demand can be a net positive for utilities who are focused on new ways they can control demand on the grid. To show you what I mean, utilities use smart meters, which you might have already installed at your home. This lets utilities look into your electricity usage on a minute by minute basis. And to be more specific, the chart that you see here in this data, it's my home and my electricity usage. So starting on the left in the middle of the night, the home is pretty quiet, we're all asleep, so electricity usage is low. And then when I wake up in the morning, I go take a shower, cook breakfast, all this takes energy, so you see a little bit of a spike there. I leave for work, so the home goes back to a dormant state. Again, not much electricity being used. But then when I come back from work, I turn on the television, lights, other appliances, and you just see the spike going into the evening for electricity that's being consumed. This type of behavior is very costly for utilities because they need to match my demand very quickly with new electricity generation. And often they use older fossil fuel powered generators to create this energy, which can be very expensive and inefficient because of how quickly they need to be activated. Electric vehicles can be a helpful tool in combating this, however, with plans already in place throughout the country that incentivize charging during low demand periods of time or gently control charging when the utility needs to reduce overall grid demand. So rather than charging my vehicle in the morning and evening when demand is high, it just adds even more to those spiking demands, I can shift my charging to the middle of the night or even in the middle of the day when I'm at work. And there are already vehicles being sold on the market today that are capable of bi-directional charging, which means the vehicle can be used as an energy storage and release electricity back to the home or community when it's needed. There's a lot that can be done with electric vehicles, and we're only now scratching the surface. They not only offer an immediate opportunity to decarbonize by displacing petroleum and transportation, but can be a helpful utility as grids continue to deploy green energy over time. They not only are on the market today, but can help us decarbonize into tomorrow. Thank you.